Coach, thanks for doing this on a short week. Uh, let's start there. Obviously, the challenges of playing two games in five days. How is that for your staff as well as you and the guys? Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a really quick turnaround. Seven days seems short for coaches. Players probably like it better. Just they'd rather just play games than practice. But the hardest part is is uh, making sure you guys are are healthy and fresh. You know, so we're very limited practice wise. We had practice in shorts yesterday for about an hour and ten minutes today. There'll be another one in shorts for about an hour. Uh, guys are a little banged up from the last game, so you know you what you don't know if they'll be ready to go for this game or not. So there's all some challenges, but everybody in our league, I think everybody or just about everybody has one or two of these short windows. Last year, I think we had two or three of them. So you know you know it, you kind of plan for it ahead of time and then uh, get ready to play. Share some thoughts on what you've seen out of New Mexico State. Yeah, they they they're they're some tough guys. I mean, they battle. Um, you know, I think some of the earlier games they were right there uh, with it. I uh, have opportunity, obviously, to beat. Uh, had a chance to beat Liberty, who's uh, been one of the best teams uh, in the Group of Five in the last couple of years. That went down to the wire. Uh, they're going to play very hard. We know that. We got to keep our poise and be disciplined. And you know, they seem like their offense found a groove in their last game um, with a change in quarterback. So. Uh, but I'm, I'm mostly concerned that we got to make sure we come out of the gates well. You know, we played at a night game, you know, four days ago. And so we, we've got to get our focus ready. And uh, it, it's at home, which is a good thing, and get ready to play. Questions for Coach? When it's five days instead of seven, what do you have to cut out? You cut out well for us. And, and again, we've done it before, and I've done this before. Uh, you really cut out your – which you hate doing, but you cut out your padded practices. And you always have, I think you always like to have one or two of them. Uh, but with just such a short window and being uh, such a physical game, you, you cut that out a little bit so you worry that as you're blocking and tackling going to be as good. You know, uh, last year we didn't see a big difference uh, when we didn't practice in pads. But, again, this is a new year, so we'll, we'll see how that part of it. And then your, your game prep. You know, we try to do a little bit of a game prep during our open date uh, before the last game, just so we have a little bit of a head start on on this five-day window. But it's uh, it's getting it in there pretty quick. So we'll have, you know, we won't change our practice schedule. And again, we don't want to take, I don't want to take all of our time of our players because we want them, you know, they got to be students and have a normal life. But you know, we'll, we'll have some meetings tomorrow and and uh, have a couple t couple uh, meeting or so sat or Saturday meeting or so Wednesday afternoon as well um, before we head out here. Who are the guys that are questionable for this game? Well, Brock Roby is, is supposed to get tested today. I think a check on his knee. He got hurt in the last game. Uh, our quarterback was banged up, but he uh, he should be able to practice and play. Um, we had a couple guys on defense and special teams that are banged up a little bit. And so it's the difference is normally by midweek, Okay, we have a good idea one way or another. Now it's some of these guys will be game time decisions. They didn't play Saturday, so I who's that? Gotta, they didn't play Saturday. Yeah, they had to fly here, but is that an edge? Yeah, they, you know, I think any time you got a little bit more time than your other opponent, you'd think that gives them a little bit of advantage. I always thought, you know, when we had open dates and other teams didn't, which it hadn't, doesn't happen a lot, but when you do, it's a little bit of advantage because you got a little bit of a chance maybe to look at some stuff. But I think sometimes it's uh, you can overanalyze too. You know, you have so much time. You, you know, coaches put in too many plays, or we we overanalyze it too much. So, I think it's you know in our in particular in our league, which is it's been good for the exposure for the league and for the teams. You know, this midweek thing is a, is an interesting challenge, and and uh, uh, the hardest part is like like you know figuring out what day it is. You know, you keep telling your mind, you know, to me, this is Thursday all the way, but. You keep forgetting, oh, it's Monday for everybody else. So, but, you know, we'll, we'll run through this stretch here in the next three weeks or so and then, then get back to normal. Is it, from a recruiting standpoint, is it tougher to get guys in from it? It is. We got, we got a few guys coming in uh, from some high schools that had open dates. Uh, so we'll have a few, but typically that's the hardest part when you want a Wednesday, Thursday, uh, or even Friday. Uh, you, don't, you don't get to see the recruits on campus as much. And, the hardest part about that now is that the signing date's been moved up. I think it's like December 4th or something. Anyway, it's the first week in December. 
So at least in November we have some Saturday games and we'll have to be able to have some recruits in. But it is a different different challenge. But I mean, hell, what in what isn't a challenge nowadays in college football, right? <laughs> Everybody's talking about it. It's like I told my staff, the goalposts to move, and we got to move with them, with it. It seems like Huff plays better and better. Did you talk about what you think? Yeah, I think you, every week again. It's it's his first year. Uh, like it's Trey's first year. I mean, those guys are still learning, but I think they're getting they're getting more and more comfortable each week with what we do. And you know, the dip, probably the biggest not the biggest difference, but one of the differences our offense is you know our tempo is pretty quick, and so you don't have a lot of time to think once a play is called. You know, we're, we're running it, and so that's usually a, a you know harder on our quarterbacks than anybody else. And he's you know Tyler's a smart guy; he's adapted really well. Done a really good job this past week of controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Yeah, we were a little bit bigger uh, than them, and and uh, you know played pretty physical up front. You know, thought our, our D line, you know, uh, played pretty consistently up front. We've gotten better there, and our O line is, uh, you know, we kind of, you know, we got a little more size there than we've had. Um, but we were had a couple guys banged up, and so there were a lot of there were several guys that got significant playing time that hadn't played as much this year. They did a pretty nice job. Coach, how valuable is that game film, that game experience for some of those offensive linemen that you rotated in? Yeah, there's nothing nothing better experience wise than actually playing in the game. You could pra- and we try to make it in, in practice uh, pretty intense. I think these guys will probably tell you. We try to make it pretty intense so it simulates, you know, the intensity of a game. But there's still, you know, there's nothing like game plays and, and uh, getting some game action. And, you know, this is a long season. Shoot, we're not even halfway through. And so we're going to need our roster, our entire roster, most of our roster to be ready to play. So we, you know, we, we got some young guys, you know, some freshmen or some other guys that uh, maybe have not played at all. Uh, that we got to get ready to play, whether it's on special teams or what have you, because it's it's going to be a long season. And, you know, the freshmen or some of those guys can play four games and still get redshirted. So we've got that in plan, uh, in particular with our special teams, because it wasn't, you know, special teams was not good in the last game. We've got to get better with that. And so we're looking at some new guys there, too. The 31 first analysts Friday, where does that rate against some of the highest numbers your teams have had over the years? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's a high. We've had, a, I've had you know, Kind of look back. We've had a few that was in the mid 30s, I think. But if we get 25 or more, that usually means we have some kind of uh, control on the tempo, and that's that's the big key for us. Is 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 offensively, once we get in the rhythm or get first downs, you got a chance to control the tempo a little bit. And the same thing's true on defense. We get in some if we get interceptions or turnovers or three and outs, then the offense is back on the field. Their defense has to come back on the field, and you got a chance to to control the tempo more. So. We're always, you know, and I'm not a stat watcher, but that's usually the first one that you'll look at and say, hey, did we control the game with our tempo? And if you have, you know, 25 first downs or more, you usually did. New staff defensively, are they doing different stuff than what they did last year? Yeah, I mean, they have uh, they have some of the same coaches. Uh, coordinator was at uh, – defense coordinator was at Sam Houston, so we played, you know, he'll know us and, and – uh, you know what what we do um, they got some of the same players of course you know i've known their head coach for a long time uh, back when he was a head coach at bishop gorman in uh in vegas and those kids like i said they play hard they got they got a lot of guys and, and they're going to be fresh and in uh and ready to go wednesday night ricky what clicked for you guys in the second half it seemed like you got a lot more stops and you were able to control their run game a lot better in that second half on friday yeah well we're um we're naturally uh, um a second half team anyway, especially the defense, you know, uh, we kind of went in and regrouped everything and came back out, we we're ready. Awesome. Questions for Ricky? Regrouped how? With what were some of the things you didn't have time to fix it? Well, uh, we just, we really had to just come together and get more comfortable with the defense, kind of get, kind of get on track with their tempo and how they were coming off the ball and, you know, how they were doing some things. It seems like the defense has been showing a lot of improvement. What do you see that you guys are doing right that, that was maybe an issue at the start of the year? Well, you know, it's it's all new for um, for most of us, so we really just had to get comfortable with the scheme. You know, had to get a had to get a couple games down. You know, like running a new defense and stuff. And after that, everybody pretty much got comfortable with doing it, and then 
and we just continued to get better. At halftime of Eastern Michigan, the defense had no sacks for the season. Mm -hmm. and then you got five in the second half, mm -hmm. and then it's just continued from that point on. Can you point at any one thing that changed it at halftime at Eastern Michigan? Well, like I said, you know we're you know we're naturally a second half team anyway, just just by you know the summer and stuff. That just goes back to the summer and stuff, you know, with with the working out and everything we did. But um, I mean, it just clicked. <laughs> yeah, it just clicked. Talk about your shirt. That's, did someone give that to you? Did you buy it or? Uh, yeah. So this is a shirt everybody has. Basically, it's just like you know, like just a kid from Bruton, Alabama. You know, and just because this all started, you know, with me just being a kid and just wanting to play football. So, just a kid from Bruton. <laughs> Coach mentioned about playing the two games in five days. You guys just want to play football. At what point does that adrenaline kick in and you don't worry about having just played a game a couple of days ago? Well, whenever you're just on a schedule, like for, for so long, you know, it's kind of fun to get something new, you know. So it's it's kind of exciting that we don't, you know, have to go and pass or have to do this, the same thing. We get to do something different. So it's all pretty, you know, it's fun. Are you still sore from Friday night? Uh, I was sore, but um, I've been kind of getting in the cold tub and in the hot tub and stuff. So, nah, I'm not. I'm not sore anymore. The Wednesday night games or the midweek games you played some of them last year. Did you like those? Yes. So we all actually liked the games. It's, it's just kind of like a quick turnaround, just because it's like I said, it's something new, and it's just kind of exciting that we don't, you know, like like Coach Rich Rod said, you know, we would rather play games than practice anyway. So. What excites you about playing a night game at Amherst Stadium? Well, I mean, the crowds, the crowds, obviously going to be rocking and stuff, and uh, and it's just, um, I guess it's just the atmosphere, really, you know. And it's not as hot, you know, for the bigger guys like myself, so we can <laughs> move around a little bit better. <laughs> what worked well in the run game for you guys in that contest? Um, I say just believing in the old linemen, trusting in them, and then also having. Tyler Hub being able to run and get yards too, so it's like it puts the defense in stress. Awesome. Questions for Trey? That last touchdown, I believe it was that you scored. Tyler got it down to the one yard line yeah. and then handed off to you, and he was the first one to come over and congratulate you for the score. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Well, I called him slow for not scoring actually on that play because he <laughs> should have scored, but he was excited for me, so yeah. it was a team effort. Uh, no, I think the closest I got was three touchdowns. I think I had like 320 yards that game. So that's the closest. What's the difference in D2 and what you're doing now? I say the resources really, nutrition-wise and strength program. That's on, that's a big difference I see. What brought you to Jackson? What brought me? Coach Garrett, Coach Rich Rod, and Coach Hot Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Rodriguez mentioned that one of the things that he's going to cut out this week is padded practices. Do you miss those, or do you like having a break from that? Uh, sometimes it, it helps, and sometimes, you know, it still could be, like, a little shaky because the offensive line still need to get their fits and schemes and stuff right. So that's the only difference I would say. Trey, what were some of the challenges for you when you moved from the Division Two level to the Division One level? I say honestly, just getting used to being around people that also play at a faster pace. I say that's a big difference, faster pace game, because we we're a lot turbo in this offense. So it's like you got to get in shape and shape. Why do you think you adjusted so quickly to this level? Um, I say the coaches, they helped me a lot and actually watching film and studying.